Um, welcome to LA County Library's virtual event, Basic Mending Techniques. I'm Mary Yogi, and I'm a librarian with LA County Library, and I'll be your host today along with my colleague, Jose Parra. This program was supported in whole or in part by the U U.S. Institute of Museum and Library Services under the provisions of the Library Services and Technology Act, administered in California by the state librarian. So it's now my pleasure to introduce you to our instructor today, Catherine Sirobararski. Catherine has taught visual arts and technology for over 20 years and currently teaches clothing and art classes, as well as moderating the Makers Club at Bishop Amont High School. She has an MFA in studio arts and grew up with the mom who sewed wedding dresses, stuffed animals, clothing, and more. Inspired by her experience in textiles, Catherine took sewing classes in high school and later integrated these skills into her sculptural works. So now I'll turn it over to Catherine and let her take it away. Thank you. Hey, good morning, everybody. Thank you, Mary. I'm going to start here with a PowerPoint. Let me share with you. So welcome to basic clothes mending. And um, I'm happy to have everyone here. And I'm assuming that everybody here doesn't have a lot of experience with mending. Um, maybe it's a refresher for you, and that's great too. Uh, but um, I'll be starting from the very basics. So I wanted to uh, touch on a little bit of the history. Well, this is my, myself, Catherine Sierboyerski. And as Mary said, I'm a visual arts and clothing teacher. And um, so mending, we're talking about mending today, but uh, the mending is an ancient craft for modern times because it goes way back in history. Um, to, so clothing in late antiquity was not the disposable commodity that it is nowadays. It was valuable enough to be named in a will used as surety for loans or included in a dowry. And we find this you know, all over the world. Okay. Um, some 3,350 years ago, an ancient Egyptian used white thread to darn an indigo headcloth, likely worn by none other than King Tut, Tutankhamun. So I thought this was really interesting when I found this, that even then it was, it was found in the tomb of King Tut, that on this important fabric they had, someone had mended it that long ago. So throughout history, and across cultures, people have been mending textiles to extend their beauty, wearability, and utility for both practical and sentimental reasons. So the cycle of fashion leading to fast, what we call now fast fashion, picked up speed during the Industrial Revolution, which introduced new textile machines, factories, and ready-made clothing, or clothing that is made in bulk and a range of sizes rather than being made to order. Um, the fabric restrictions and more functional styles that were made necessary by World War II led to an increase in standardized production for all clothing. After becoming accustomed to such standardization, middle class consumers became more receptive to the value of purchasing mass produced, excuse me, back one more slide. Um, mass produced, I'm trying to, sorry, I'm trying to move this out of the way here. Okay, mass, mass produced clothing after the war. Okay. Um, and then some reasons to, uh, to mend your clothing are environmental concerns. Uh, a quote I came across is over 11 million tons of unwanted textiles are going to the landfill in the US alone every year. And from what I understand, they're also exported abroad. A lot of the uh, wealthier countries are exporting all their clothing waste to poorer countries. And then um, it may even get burned and it's definitely not all used. Um, so a lot of it is not used. And then there's also the concern about unfair labor practices. So um, knowing you're mending or, or even making your own clothes, um, you know, you're not contributing to these things. So um, in, there was a resurgence of so-called domestic handicrafts crafts reclaimed by feminists in the late 90s and elevated by visual artists from the early 2000s onward. So there was a, in the 70s, there was 
a lot of focus on fiber art and things like macrame and making your own clothes. And then there's this resurgence. And there were a lot of artists working in fiber in um, the late 90s and to 2000s. Um, it happened concurrently with the sea change in consumerism known as fast fashion, a global buying frenzy with disastrous human environmental repercussions. So reasons to mend your clothes, it will save you money, you know you're helping the environment, it's relaxing and it's also fulfilling. So um, some of you, or I think a lot of people actually have a memory of some relative family member, like maybe your mom or another relative um, mending clothes, or maybe you had experience doing that. And then um, you find that it, it goes back to that connection with ancient humans where you're, you're doing this basic activity and then it's giving you satisfaction. Um, and it's just this repetitive little activity of focus that can relax you. <clears throat> So three techniques that we're going to get you started with today that we're going to go over are uh, replacing a button, fixing a hem, and repairing a hole in a sock. Um, not sure if everybody has all their supplies or was able to get something to repair. Hopefully you did, and, and that might be fun for you. But if not, you could go back and do it later. So uh, these are the basic type of supplies you need to repair. Um, basic mending. So a needle, thread, scissors, um, also an orange, a ball, or a, another round object. So that would be for darning, which we'll talk about with the socks. And then uh, just the basics of getting started with your thread, uh, you're going to work with either a double or single thread. Today, also because it'll help you see better, I'm going to work with a double thread. So if you have your needle, you could you could get your needle ready and thread and um, just thread your needle. That might take you a minute. Um, a couple tips for threading your needle would be to, you can uh, wet the end of the thread and flatten it out and put it through. You could clip it with the scissors um, to, to make more of a flat edge to the thread. So you could try those things. I'm just going to give you a preview of what we're, we're going to be doing, um, and then we'll go ahead and do it. So don't worry, we're not doing all these techniques. These are just, I thought these were fun to look at, some fancy threading uh, that people do with, with button stitching. Okay, so we've got um, a four-hole button. Uh, for this, you need, we're going to use a, well, actually, we're going to start with a two-hole button, and then we'll need a needle, thread, and scissors. Okay, so. So um, this should make it pretty clear here as a preview. Um, if you, this is just for showing, sewing on shirts. I decided not to show how to use the shank and the fancier way of putting a button on since this is basics. Uh, this is the two hole button. So I'll show you in a moment, we're gonna sew through it back and forth three times basically, and then wrap around the thread to strengthen it and also give it, gives it a little space so that when you go to button it, um, it's not really tight down to the fabric. All right, and then here's a four hole button, pretty much the same except you do a crisscross with your stitching and still do the wrapping around with the thread. Okay, then after that, we're gonna look at how to uh, fix a hem um, in, in like a lighter fabric, um, like a shirt or jacket. <clears throat> a lot of times, you know, the hem will start to come out and done, especially in jackets if you wear them a lot. So using a, a blind hem stitch or it can be called, it has, it has various names. Uh, there, the blind hem stitch is that on the other side, um, you barely see anything. You see those little dots. And then on the side that you're sewing, you know, you see this diagonal stitch. So sometimes people say backstitch, but it's really also mainly called a whip stitch. So we doing that. And then you can kind of get an idea here. We start um, right here where the thread goes in. We start there and then go over diagonally and then come back out. But you, the key is that you want to just pick up a teeny bit of thread there with the needle. So it won't show up a lot on the other side. And then finally, mending socks, which is a little bit 
more complex, but once you get the concept, it's not too bad. Um, so I mentioned you, you might wanna have a ball or an orange or something like that. Um, so that's because uh, people use these, these fancier tools for it, but uh, you don't need that. I think it's called a darning mushroom. <laughs> And, but anything round will work. So then you would do that so that you can put your sock over the round shape and um, that will give you space and also allow it not to bunch up. But what you can see here is the way it works is you do these vertical lines of thread and then you come back through and do horizontal lines, but you weave them through, you know, up and over, up and over the stitch. So, uh, the best comparison I thought of that people might recognize is, is remember making those uh, woven pot holders, you know, something like that. And it works the same way with the weaving. But what it does is it, it actually like creates another little piece of fiber or textile for you in, in that space where there's a hole. All right, so there's a close up of the look of the weaving. It's a, a little bit different method. Okay, and then just a preview um, to keep in mind, if, if you do enjoy this workshop and you, you're interested in doing more, uh, you've probably heard about mending, like visible mending is, is a big trend right now. So uh, we'll have our next workshop in June. And so mending can be expanded to include embellishments such as embroidery or patchwork. And then hand stitching can also be used to create toys or household items. So that's what we'll have, we'll, we'll cover that in the next, uh, you know, a few other things too, but patching, uh, stitching with decorative stitching, those will be part of it. Okay, so uh, go ahead and get your, if, you, if you're ready with it, get a thread, needle, scissors, and a button if you would like to try a button. We're gonna go to that. Okay. So I have this fabric here and I'm gonna use this pink thread on it because I think you'll be able to see that pretty well. Okay, so what you wanna do is go ahead and thread your needle if you haven't done so already. I'm actually going to start with the four hole button here. Okay, uh, let me go over. There's two ways to make a knot. So you have the, the end of your thread. Uh, you can hold it between your two, your forefinger and your thumb, and then wind it around once, roll it off, and then Pull that down here, see? And then you have your knot. Um, if you have a hard time with it, another way you could do it is just take your thread here and uh, tie a knot like that. You could do that if you really have to, just do that. Or you can twist the thread a little bit before you tie the knot and then that can make it that stronger too. Okay, so then, when you get started with your button, you're just gonna take your needle and push it through one of the holes. Uh, you may, oh, another thing you could do, let's say it's a really important place you're putting this button, uh, you may want to just start off by giving yourself a spot to start. So that's another thing people do is you could bring your thread through and then um, just make a stitch to start off on so you know, okay, that's where I want the button to be. So I'm gonna put the, I'm gonna just cut that off now. I made a little knot and then I'm cutting it off. So this isn't super important to do this. You can also mark it. Um, there's all these marking tools for sewing. 
or something like chalk or um, something that's a washable marker. All right, so I'm gonna come through this spot and then put the button on top. Okay. And then you're just gonna start going diagonally over to one side. Okay. Then you're gonna come back up to the other one. So this one, and then go back over across the, making the X. And then you're just gonna go over that a few times to make sure it's nice and strong. And go back over the same X. All right. So depending on uh, what you're repairing, you would go over at least three times to make sure it's nice and strong. Like I noticed my jackets, the buttons come off more often or, you know, pants, but then pants are a little bit different because you need to, uh, make them even stronger with this other method, which I'll, I'll cover the next workshop. Okay. All right, hopefully everybody is doing great with this. And then once you feel you've gone over your X enough times, you wanna come up underneath the button here with the needle. Okay. And then you want to catch a little bit of that thread and you can make a knot and then you're going to go around three times, two, three, and then you can do your final knots here. So remember going around three times gives a little space between the fabric and the button. And then also makes it stronger, more stable. And then once you make your final, final knot, you can just cut it. I have these larger scissors, but you can get really tiny scissors too for sewing. Either one is fine. I had a small pair, but it was really stiff. So I decided to go with a big pair. All right, so there's my button. Okay, so that's the four hole button. So now let's try the two hole. So thread your needle. And there's no exact number needle that you use for these. Uh, it's just up to you, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, when you're gonna need a thicker thread, then you do need a bigger needle, a thicker needle. So like, let's say you're, another thing I'm gonna cover next time would be um, mending like a sweater. And uh, when you're mending a sweater, you might want a thicker thread for that because you want to match the fiber as close as you can. And then also I'm you know, using pink, but the colors I'm choosing are to stand out so you can see better. But obviously with your projects, you want to pick a thread as close to your color of your um, garment as possible. Okay, I'm making the knot. 
And so we're basically doing the same thing with the two hole, um, very similar. So just, you can either make a spot to start or just put your needle through the hole. And instead of making the X this time, you're gonna just go back and forth over those two holes a couple times, like three times would be good. So hopefully if you're able to follow along, you're finding this relaxing. Just something, yeah, very basic human about doing these things. And uh, you probably noticed that during the pandemic that people got really interested in mending along with um, cooking, baking, all these kind of old fashioned things that are you can do yourself. So that's another reason why it's so satisfying. And if you have a long thread, it may get tangled up the way mine just did. So you might wanna be careful about not making it too long if you don't need it that long. Okay, so again, I, I went over this um, a couple times, three times or four times, and then go underneath the button, bring your needle out. Yeah, I'm definitely running into problems with the long thread. It's always a trick, like, or a tricky because you have to make sure you don't make it too short, but you don't want to make it too long so it tangles up. So, all right. So you're going to uh, go underneath this. You can just go ahead before you make your knots and wrap it around three times again, just like we did with the other one. So we're gonna wrap one, two, three, and then pick up at the base of the button, pick up some thread there and make your first knot. You're gonna to wanna to make two knots just to finish it off so it won't come unraveled. So there's one. Make my second one. You can use a thimble for this too. I just have gotten used to when the needle bumps into me, I know to back off. But if you're really worried about poking yourself, you could use a thimble, but I've never gotten used to that. Okay, so then you're gonna trim off your thread. All right, so two buttons. All right, we are going to move on to hemming. Okay, so like I said, my thread got a little tangly here on the other button, so I'm just gonna trim that off. It's all right. All right, so uh, for hemming, you wanna go to a jacket or shirt, something that the hem is coming out of. So I have this jacket that I really like, but I'll show you the hem. So. It's all just coming out here. So you just want to pick an, the end where you want to start here to rehem it. And then for this one, I'm going to use a different color again. So I think you can see this green a little better. So around the same size needle seems good. I think for the, uh, when we get to the sock in a minute, uh, we'll use a thicker needle. Okay, so cutting my thread. Oops. Okay, this is where your eyesight gets tested. <laughs> In my clothing class, I always find this high school students can thread a lot faster than me. So I'm like, oh, my eyes are getting bad. <laughs> All right, so you got your two threads together. If you're gonna try this fancy method, wrap it around your finger 
roll it off and pull down. If you Google it, there are some really clever ways people have come up with making the knot too, if this doesn't work for you. So you could check it out. Or like I said, you can just tie a knot and do that a couple times and that could work. Okay, so first thing you wanna do is figure out where your starting point is gonna be. And then you're gonna put your needle through here and pull it like this so that the, the knot will be hidden behind there, see? And then you're gonna to start to do a diagonal. Um, first, first you need to pick up a teeny bit of the thread on the jacket and get your stitch going. And then uh, we're going to go actually the other direction. I'm gonna go a little bit forward. Actually, I decided I'm going to do it a different direction because you can you can choose any direction. You can choose diagonal like this, or you can go back and forth, which is kind of nice because it looks like a uh, it's kind of a zigzag pattern. But again, it doesn't matter on the other side because you're not going to see it on the other side. So, so that way you can just pick up a little thread at the top and then decide where you're going to go next and then pick that up. And just make sure when you get to the top, uh, you just pick up a little bit so it doesn't show through very much. Now, again, since I'm using green, it's going to show up a little more, but you can see you don't really see much, right? Even with the green. So the key with all these is uh, with this one and also with the sock darning, you want to be aware of um, how much you're picking up of the thread that's on the other side or the fiber threads. Okay, so pick up a spot here. So again, any direction, if you prefer just go one direction, you can, you can just keep switching angles. Okay. And then just pick up a little bit. All right, so that should give you a pretty good idea how that works. Um, so then it's got a nice strong, it's probably a stronger hem than it was before from the machines, wherever the factory was where it was made. All right, so that's the hem stitch. And then for the next one, um, we're gonna go to the sock because I don't wanna run out of time here for the sock. So, Hopefully that's enough. Oh, I wanted to knot this first before we're done. Okay, so let's say I finished my whole hem and the next time I go down here to pick up fabric on the hem, I'm just gonna take it all the way, actually I'm gonna take it all the way through. Sorry, I made a mistake. <laughs> I'm not gonna take it all the way through. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this piece here, right there. And then I'm going to take the needle all the way through this loop. Okay, so, um, so I put it through here and then I pick up these two loops because it's double threaded and then pull it. Okay, so I'll do it again. So I'm gonna pick up some fabric right here at the edge and then bring it through and then poke my needle through this loop. Okay, and then pull it. And then that keeps it tight. Okay, so now the other side is great and is very strong now. And then the two knots will keep it from unraveling again. All right, so now we are gonna go to a sock. So hopefully you have a sock that has a hole in it. I need to reach over and grab something here. All right, here it is. <laughs> One thing that I forgot. Uh, I have a tangerine here, right? So um, if you have a tangerine, uh, an orange, uh, anything around, a, a rubber ball, um, baseball could work. So what you wanna use that for is uh, putting it inside of the sock. So I have my daughter's soccer sock here. And if you have kids who do sports, you'll know what I'm talking about, that they get these holes in their socks. 
So um, we are going to repair a hole in a sock. So what you wanna do with your sock is take your round object, push it down inside the sock. Or actually first thing we wanna do is turn the sock inside out. Okay, so turn your sock inside out. I, assuming some of you are working on this, I wish I could see what everyone's doing. It would be great to see all the fun things you're doing. So hopefully some of you are able to participate and you're enjoying it. All right, so here is the tangerine inside of the sock. So now you see the hole and it looks actually more manageable because you realize, oh, it's not really that big of a space there. But the key is again, it's like a weaving, it's a weaving thing. So um, you want to get your thread. I'm gonna use white because I think you'll see that really well. So get, go ahead and get some white thread. And then I'm gonna use my, this needle has a, a larger head or a larger eye. Excuse me. And I'm gonna use that because it's a thicker needle too. So that's good. All right, so I'm gonna thread the needle. And this one. We got it. Okay, again, we're gonna double, use a double thread. You can also with some of these things, and I think I'll go more into that in the next workshop. Um, you can use it like almost an embroidery thread for, for certain garments, but I think this is fine for this one. So the key is what we're gonna do is we're gonna weave lengthwise back and forth. And then you wanna start a little beyond the hole so that you create this strong um, base for your weaving. Okay, so I'm gonna start uh, a little ways back and then I'm going to just come down and make a lengthwise stitch. Pick it up down here. All right, so there's my first stitch. In the future, probably could use a bigger orange because it could stretch it out a little bit more for me. So that'd be nice. Um, and then you're gonna come over and pick up another piece and again, get over to that side so that you can come back and create another vertical line. And then, but the key is also, you don't want to pull it tight. You wanna keep it loose. So I'm just gonna come over, start another one. And another, there's a lot of examples you can see online where they made very intricate uh, stitching. And you can see uh, that, especially there's a tradition in Japan, a couple stitching traditions where they do super detailed weaving through things. So this has some holes in it, like little holes. So I'm gonna go back over to cover up some of those spots where the holes are uh, to make this stronger to weave back through. A little cross over there. So there's no rule for how to do this. It's just whatever uh, makes it look the nicest for the overall covering the hole in the in the sock. All right. So we're about to turn around in a second here and do the other side. And see, I'm realizing now that I need another longer thread, so I have to keep track of that. I think I'm just going to knot this off and then start on the other side with a new thread. Okay. So just keep going back and forth until you have this vertical or lengthwise um, <clears throat> stitching to follow.
Okay, so one more slide. We're almost, I can't believe we're already almost through the workshop. So we're gonna go the other direction now. One moment here. So again, double thread. All right. So I'm gonna start on one end here and start going through. I'm gonna pick up the thread right next to the stitch and then go over it under. So you keep just going over, under, over, under. I think I'm going to go back over that actually to make it better because it's kind of loose there. They actually have uh, little like miniature looms you can get to keep track of all your stitches to make these neater. So you just want to go under, over, under, over. The, the benefit of using an orange or a tangerine like I have is I was accidentally poking it with the needle and now it smells like a tangerine. <laughs> okay, so yeah, you wanna stretch it as much as you can so you can see to go between all the stitches, but you're just gonna keep going back and forth. Some of these, it could be good to have a little magnifying lens too. Or your reading glasses or something like that. So we won't have time to finish this whole thing, but you wanna, uh, like I said, get that, uh, woven effect by going back and forth, back and forth. So let's see, I'll do this for a couple more minutes. Okay, I'm gonna go over to this side. I, two of my stitches ended up crossing over each other, but I'm just going to make it look as best as I can, because that's one, one issue I'm having here at the end. But you just try to keep gently pulling it through, too, so that you get um, you don't get it to tighten down too quickly. I think if you spend a lot of time and you get your lines close together, that's what gets that really nice woven look. So I'm just, as I come through, I'm just going to go over to my next starting point and then that will uh, bring that thread over to that side. So in a moment here we'll be able to have questions also so that if you have any questions I can answer them then hopefully. So again most of this is working I did have just that problem with the one of them crossing over so it's looking a little bit not perfectly straight but you need to just keep weaving back through. And then you keep them as close together as you can to the rows of the stitching. <clears throat> I 
Okay. So uh, just keep going back and forth. And my uh, weave is getting really small too. So it's possible even if you don't pull it tightly, it could be making a really tiny um, set of stitches going one way or the other. Kind of makes me think of the method of sutures, but I think it's a lot denser than that. So I bet surgeons are probably good at stitching. All right, so I think next time I'll definitely use a thicker thread too to show you the weave more closely. Uh, but maybe um, before I go, I'll show you uh, the photo of the details again of how it's supposed to look. So just quickly, uh, this is this is the PowerPoint that I showed before. And see, this is how it's supposed to come out. Um, they do cross over, but uh, if you're careful, I think it's the thicker thread too that could help. So you can even use yarn, you know, for, um, I did this before and it looked at a little bit better with thread, but I think actually the ideal method is using a thicker sort of a yarn that matches the fibers more of the, of the sock. So you want to go for this. I mean, this is somebody who practices a lot. So you want to go for that very even woven look. Okay. So. So I hope you all will join us with the next workshop and um, looking forward to going into further detail and hopefully I can answer any questions that you have. Great, thank you so much, Catherine. Um, we do have some questions that I'd like to um, ask you about. Um, we have, we had several questions, so we'll try to get to as many as we can in the next few minutes. Um, but first, I just wanna mention that um, Catherine had mentioned that we're going to have intermediate um, basic mending in June. So that'll be Saturday, June 11th, also at 11 a.m. So very similar to today's time. Um, everyone who's on the call now will be getting an email um, next week with a link to this recording. And we'll also send you um, an email in late May so that you can sign up for the June um, intermediate um, basic mending class, okay? So um, from some of the questions we got, Catherine, mm -hmm. um, are there appropriate times or how do you decide on when to use the single or double thread um, or is it just preference? That's a good question. Um, I think it's preference, but if you really wanna be sure something is strong enough, then you wanna use the double thread, yeah. Oh, okay, the, it has to do with strength as well. Yeah, strength. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, how many knots is best to finish off your sewing? At least two is good. Okay. Um, on the hemming example, example number two, mm -hmm. um, is that strong enough for pants and shorts and like waistbands? I think if you use a little thicker, you definitely want to do double and maybe use thicker thread. I, I think they have specific thread for jeans. So if you get a stronger kind of a thread, maybe for jeans. Okay. Um, a few people have asked, um, should you wax your thread? And um, can, you, can you explain a little bit more about how wax <laughs> works in sewing? You can wax your thread to help you thread it, but I never remember to use that. So I don't think it's necessary, but... Um, you can to help you thread the needle. That's, I think that's the main way people use it. Okay, okay. And, and would it help with tangling or anything? Does um, it differ? Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not familiar with yeah, that. Yeah, no, I think that's a good idea. It could help with tangling maybe, but I would be careful because some fabrics, you don't want to mix wax with the fabric of a blouse or something. So, cause right. that could be, you know, greasy, so. Right, right, okay. Um, we have a question. Do you have any tips on how to mend a hole in a wool sweater or, oh, yeah. um, a, and, and I think you talked a little bit about like matching fabric or matching fibers with the, with the article clothing. Yeah, I was researching that for the second workshop. Um, and, uh, typically people use this, um, it's like a gauze that you actually put on the back of the wool, but, um, 
uh, yeah, I'm going to talk more about it, but you, you, you should Google it or you can come to the workshop because I, I don't think I could quickly tell you how to do it. Um, but yeah, if you can, if you can get some yarn for sure. Uh, and, and then using this, it's like an, I think it's like an iron on adhesive that goes on the back and then that kind of patches it, but then as well as stitching with a similar kind of um, a weave too, you do, um, there's a method, I'm trying to remember which country it was from. I feel like it's from Scandinavia somewhere, but they do this, perf they try to imitate the weave of the original. So they had this like kind of a braiding pattern. Um, so there, I'm going to show a lot of things like that next time that you can, okay. yeah, try oh, you your can best really, to copy it. <laughs> you can really get into this. Mm -hmm. um, so I, um, while we're kind of going through these Q and A's, um, Jose is going to put three books into the chat, links to our catalogs. So you can check them out from the library. Some of them are available um, in ebook form as well. So um, Jose is gonna put those three books in the chat that um, Catherine has recommended. I'll also include a list of those in the email that you receive next week. Um, and another question we had is, any tips on positioning correctly? Mm -hmm. um, I always end up with my button a little off or the, mm -hmm. or the material wrinkles a bit, like mm -hmm. the best way of doing that. Well, I think that the idea that I was saying where you can make a starting stitch. So if you mark the exact spot and then uh, make a little stitch, you know, put your needle up, make the tiny stitch there and then start on that, that spot. Um, some I had some buttons here if I can grab this quickly, but some buttons, they have a shank in them already. So see, I don't, oh, I, I don't know if you can see this, but they have like a little, see, there's a little notch there and that's called the shank that's already there. And so some blouses are gonna have that kind of a button. And then that's a different method to sew it on, which is probably gonna prevent the puckering, like you said, like let's say a silk blouse, <laughs> you know, that'd be different. You have to be more careful. Right. Okay, great. Um, we we have another question about what's the other side of the sock look like? Oh yeah, good question. And I, and I know you did it in a different color, so it's not yeah. gonna match, but um, yeah. we have a few yeah. people who wanna see that. Well, typically it's not really done to disguise it on the sock, but what they do is they use the same color. And okay. then um, like the socks I was watching demos on, they were on wool socks and this soccer sock doesn't happen to be wool. so. I was sort of trying to decide if I should be using like a yarn or a thread. So just trying to take this, turn this inside out here. Do you have another question while I'm getting the oh, sure. out um, of the so how, would, how would you, um, how would you fix um, a tiny hole in a knit t-shirt? Is it the same darning technique or? Um, it's kind of the same thing as they said about the sweater where they have this, I'll, I'll be sure to get that by next time. They have this material that's like a, it's like um, a lining kind of material. Um, yeah, and, and so they, you can iron it on or you can patch from behind and then you carefully work on the stitches too. Okay. So, yeah, but that would be, I'm, I'm gonna make sure to include that for next time. So let's see what it looks like on the other side. Yeah, so again, my stitching did not come out perfectly neat, but you can see that there is a um, sort of a fiber there now, that fiber uh, texture, but there's no visible, there's no visible hole left. Okay, so oh, okay, right, right. So if that was in the same color, um, mm -hmm. it would, you wouldn't really notice it. Yeah. Um, so a few people are asking if this would cause like rubbing on the toes or, um, do you know if the wearer would, if it would be uncomfortable. notice it? Yeah. I, when I'm feeling it now, I don't feel like a bump. Okay. So I think if you're careful, the key they were saying like with the sweater too, is to pick up a very little amount. And, and with the sweater, they were saying, you're going to try to pick up the fiber only on that side of the sweater. So you really try to avoid the other side. Okay. So, okay. but then I guess that would touch someone's skin, but I think it stay, if you pick up small amounts, I think it keeps it really flat and less noticeable for sure. Okay. And um, I think I'll, I'll end with the comment from someone on the Q&A mm -hmm. that said, 
Many in a sock seems very labor intensive. Uh, <laughs> the sock must be pretty special in order to do that. Yeah, I know. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's, it is kind of funny to get into that mode of like, I need to mend everyone's socks because with our busy lives, it's not a typical way of thinking. But, but I think, yeah, if you have, I do have a few pairs that I've spent the money on really nice wool socks, like for hiking or something. Right, And exactly. those for sure you want to keep. Exactly, that's a great skill to have. Yeah. Well, I just, um, I know we're running out of time here. So I just want to thank you so much, Catherine. Mm -hmm. um, I have some closing items for people so that they know about. Um, and whoops, we really hope you enjoyed today's program. Thank you so much for all the people who joined us. We had so many, and I'm sorry if we didn't get to your question. Um, but thank you so much, Catherine, for sharing your passion and your knowledge about this. As a reminder, we will have part two, Intermediate Mending Techniques, Saturday, June 11th at 11 a.m. And again, we'll be sending you an email in late May so that you can register for that. And you'll also see it on any of the LA County Library emails that you may be getting. And that's what you probably use to sign up for this one. Also, if you're into mending, you may possibly also be into gardening. So we want to tell you about an upcoming, um, another virtual program funded by the same grant that we have. It's planting and caring for native plants with the Theodore Payne Foundation, who is like the centerpiece of native plants in, in Los Angeles. So that program will be Wednesday, May 18th at 6 p.m. And um, I will throw the registration in the chat. Also, you'll be getting that um, in the emails as well. Um, if you're interested in any more of these virtual programs or any of our programs that are happening in the library, please visit, visit us at lacountylibrary.org. We wanna thank you very much and wish you happy mending. And I'll leave it to Catherine if you have any last words for all of your new students here who, um, according to everyone on the chat, is thanking you so much for um, for learning, for teaching them something new. And we hope that you come into the library with freshly darned socks and uh, repaired of buttons and everything. So Catherine, did you have anything? Yeah, thanks everybody. And I really appreciate your questions gave me a lot of ideas and I, I really appreciate your feedback and hope you were able to do a little stitching while, while I was presenting. Great. And I look forward to hopefully seeing you all again in June. Yeah. Yes, we'll see everyone in June. Bye. Bye, thank you.